In this tutorial, we'll be going over how you can use Adobe Illustrator to create this vectorized carve effect where it looks like the letter has been inscribed into the surface here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started in a new document. I'm gonna size my document at 1920 by 1080 pixels. And the first step is to create a rectangle in the size of the document. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to click and drag to create a rectangle like that. I wanna remove the stroke fill and then apply a color here. I'm just gonna go with a lighter shade like green. Whatever color you choose, make sure to choose a really light shade of it. I'm going with a light shade of green here, as you can see. And now I'm gonna grab my selection tool so I can resize this to 1920 by 1080. And now I can center that up on my artboard like that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a single letter to use for this example. Now you can use any shape, path, or vector object that you'd like. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna use a single letter. I'm gonna grab my text tool, click on the canvas, and I'm just gonna use the letter N for this demonstration. Let me zoom in on that. Let me select that, and I'm gonna change my font up here. The font that I'm using is called Groovy. Groovy script. Okay, there we go. Now I wanna convert that to outlines. So I'm gonna to go to type and I'm gonna select create outlines. And there we go. Now let me zoom back out. To zoom in and out, I'm just holding alt and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. I'm gonna scale this up and hold shift to lock the aspect ratio while doing so. And I wanna center this up on my canvas as well. So I'm gonna use the center alignment tool like that. And now I wanna create a copy of this letter and just put it off to the side for now. We're gonna work with it later. So to make a copy of it, I'm gonna hold alt and click and drag like that, and it's gonna put a copy like that out there in the corner, and I'm just gonna leave that out of sight for now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click and drag over both of these objects. I want the letter and the rectangle selected, and I wanna open up the Pathfinder menu and then select from shape modes, I wanna select minus front. And now it is negative space. That letter is now negative space within that rectangle. If you move it off the canvas, you can see as such. Let me press Control Z to put that back. Now what I wanna do is create a copy of this. I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna Alt, hold Alt and click and drag and take a copy of this and put this off to the side. And I wanna take this main copy right here and I wanna make this a darker shade of green. I'm gonna choose my preferred color method here and I'm gonna make this one a little darker. I'm even gonna add a little more vibrance to this. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna make another copy of this. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna select this object. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt and click and drag to create a copy. And then I'm gonna hold Shift at the same time so that it locks it onto the axis and I can move it down and to the right like that. And I'm gonna move it about that far. I'm gonna change the color of this. I'm gonna use like a dark shade of blue, something like that. And I'm gonna move this about that far from the original. And now I want to send this to the bottom. So I'm gonna right click this object and go to Arrange and send to the back. And now what I could do is I could select both of those rectangles right there, both of these objects, go to Object, Blend, choose Blend Options. And from Blend Options, we want Specified Distance and roll your mouse wheel down until you have the lowest setting here, which is 0.1 pixels and click OK. And now if we go to Object, Blend, Make, it'll create a uh, blend of those two objects right there. So let me zoom out. Let me take this object. I wanna make a copy of this object. I'm gonna hold Alt and click and drag like that to have a copy of it. And I'm going to place this, I'm gonna center that up vertically and horizontally on the artboard like that. And as you can see here, this thing is starting to come together. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this object right here and I'm gonna make this an even darker shade of blue than what we used for the gradient or the other object over there. And I'm gonna move this down I want this to be positioned beneath the blended object. So I'm gonna right click that and go to arrange and send to the back. And I'm gonna position this one, let me zoom in on this. I'm gonna position this one right about here. This one's gonna represent a little bit of a drop shadow. So I don't wanna position it too far away from the original. I'll put that right about there. And then I'll go to effect, blur, Gaussian blur. And the value I'm using here is about four. You can test it out though. It's probably gonna look different based on the size of your object or the color that you're using. Uh, I think I'll go with, yeah, 4.4 looks pretty good. I'll click okay to finalize that. And now I wanna put a little bit of a backdrop here so that this is not white. So let me click off of this to deselect it. I wanna use a darker shade for this over here. If you notice, it just looks a little more realistic if you have a darker shade in there. So let me grab my rectangle tool. 
I'm gonna click and drag to create a rectangle in the size of the letter right there. And I'm gonna change the color of this to something a little more suitable for this. Now I'm going to grab my selection tool, right click, arrange, send to the back. And if you zoom in, in fact, I may even make this a little lighter. Okay, it's looking a little better. If you zoom in, you can get a better view of how it looks compared with the drop shadow. You want the drop shadow to stand out enough so that you can see it. So you don't want to make this background too dark. Okay, I think I'll leave it right there. That's pretty good. And now the final step would be to create a little bit of a glowing edge. Well, maybe not glowing, but a little bit of a beveled edge around the letter like that to make it look more like it's been carved into the surface, like an engraved sort of look. So this is what our original shape is for. We're going to take this original shape, center this up on the artboard like that. And now we are going to remove the fill and then apply a white stroke. I'm going to enable the stroke and I'm going to make that white. Now you probably can't see it. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it better. And I'll come over here to my stroke tab and I want to change the size of this. I'm just going to hover over it and roll the mouse wheel up like this. And if you notice, as I roll the mouse wheel up, the stroke size is increasing. Now I don't want these corners and edges to be protruding over the edges of the carved letter here. So to fix that, I'm going to come down here to where it says align stroke and I'm going to choose this option over here to the right that says align stroke to the outside. And that right there is the effect we're going for. Now I can do a better job of resizing this because I know exactly what I'm working with. Okay, so I'll bring that right about there. That looks good. And depending on the color of your foreground here, you may want to reduce the opacity of this a little bit. You could bring that down just to make it look a little more subtle. There we go. That looks pretty good. And once you're finished, uh, I would recommend going into trim view so you have a nice view of how this looks without these edges here in the way. So come up here to where it says view and go to trim view. And there you go, now you have a full look. And that is how you can create a vectorized carve effect using Adobe Illustrator. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Illustrator Explainer series. It's a collection of over 100 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Adobe Illustrator, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.